who that. I'm a who that. Long as I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose or winning, I'm a who that. Sports coma, yeah, this is where we do that. 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 Huh? Boogie like this, and I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Somebody please better help. Running this thing like Elf. Thank God every day I'm not a fel. Go to YouTube live with Big Q and the guys. If you ain't ride or die, the bandwagon get flipped. Been marching in, that was way for the ring. I was yelling out your shame for the championship. Fucking on town, duck down. Falcons, pluck, get shut down. Panthers ain't much to touchdown. The vision really belong to us now. So much hate on the Saints, you could probably tell. Ever since Bounty Gate hit the NFL, when things seem fishy, then you probably smell. The crooked referees are Roger Goodell. Yeah. like this, and I'm a who that. Every day I'm living, I'm a who that. News are winning, I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that, eh. Where we do that, eh. Where we do that, where we do that, where we do that, eh. Boogie like this, and I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. You're listening to the sports coma. Big Q and the guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now rocking with the sports coma with Big Q and the guys, where we have intense, entertaining, educating, and enlightening sports talk from your favorite sports fam. Shout out to the Udad Nation. Appreciate y'all joining me for this episode of the coma, man. We up in this thing. Shout out to the fam. This one entitled Peyton Talks Pick Panthers looking at Coach Chris Richard. And it's twisting, turning, and everything else snapping and popping. And this thing on MLK Day. So shout out to the family members. Appreciate y'all being in the live stream. Please feel free to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And feel free to share the show links on your social media feed. We up in this thing. And like every MLK Day, I always like to kind of shed a little light on how great the legacy. Not only just Martin Luther King, but his entire family that's, that was involved in it. Going back to his father and before then. Very powerful family. Very intelligent. Did a lot for the advancement of people in this country. Of black people in this country. And just in it, in, in a lot of people said... Uh, said negative things about him, but in the end, it was it was all it was something else. His legacy to behold and carrying forth. So people have to understand and remember their history. And don't let nobody take your history away from you. Remember where you come from, or you be doomed to repeat it. That is a universal principle. So I applaud a lot of our Jewish family members out there who always uphold their history and hold true of the things that happened to them, both positive and negative. They also uphold those things as well as everybody else that should keep that in their mind so shout out to the families on mlk day also this is something i also like to share this is from news one and this is actually true i've been knowing this for some time that this was something you can look up you can google this article and you can actually find it online that there was actually a trial that happened and the family was awarded one dollar from the trial you can actually look that up anyway with that being said let's jump into some saints news and notes on this one sean payton was uh you know got on uh, uh and i got the audio for that by the way we're gonna go over that uh i'm gonna go over the audio on the uh with the sean payton situation we're gonna go over that and figure out uh you know exactly what he said about the picks and everything but this is an article from the pff the pft camp that was basically breaking down uh sean payton what he said about the picks and mid-round picks and this is going to be an interesting situation. I can see how it all is uh, it's going to unfold and undevelop uh, because the reality is that wherever he goes, he don't want the Saints. Like if it goes to, let's say, the Houston Texans or a team, let's say you have two first-round picks, he's going to want to give you the mid-round pick. He keeps the top pick so he can use that to add to his team. That's what kind of situation this is going to unfold. So this is going to be really interesting depending on, um, you know, just Sean Payton might complicate things with this this whole trade scenario. As you've seen what happened with Gruden and the rest of those guys, they gave up and gave up whatever they got. What's interesting about the Saints, and it's just me, I was talking to the family members about this whole situation was the fact that I just think that, uh, hold on here, family, hold on. I just think that, uh, y'all let me know they're saying they're having sound issues. Y'all, let me hold on here. How's that now? Y'all let me know. Put one in the chat if that sounds better. All right, so with that being said, uh, it was interesting about the whole Sean Payton thing and the New Orleans Saints things is usually when you want something for something else, you usually come out and say 
what you want. Like if you come out and say, listen, this is Sean Payton. We want two first round picks, a second round pick, a third round pick or a fourth round pick for Sean Payton. If you don't want to give that to me, then don't call me. Okay. Hold on, fam. They're saying the mic is off. All right. So with that, okay, y'all, y'all hear? It? Okay, y'all can hear. Good. Okay, y'all can hear me. All right. All right. Y'all can hear me. Okay, saying it's blasting. Okay, hold on, family. Hold on, hold on. Okay, y'all. So two. So y'all can't hear nothing. Hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let me see what's going on here. Just a second. All right. All right. Hopefully that's better, man. I don't know what's going on. Okay. There you go. All right. So hopefully it sounds better, man. You might be a little behind. I don't know. But anyway, with that being said, I'm not going to keep you all for very long. We're going to just keep on going. Uh, and uh, what, if, if you're having problems. Okay. I hear it now. I just did a little test there to turn it down. Yeah, it is. It's kind of up there. So yeah, I just adjusted it. Hopefully that's better for you guys. All right. So with that being said, man, let's just keep it going on this thing. Now, it was interesting, like I was saying about the Sean Payton situation, was the the issue is, is like the Saints are not really like having a firm asking price for Coach Payton. They're not coming out and saying, you know, we want two firsts, a second, and, you, you know, a fourth round pick for Sean Payton. Mickey Loomis came out and says, we'll take a first round pick and whatever, which is kind of really milk toast to me for to come out like if you have Sean Payton and we've been having Sean Payton for a while okay we've been having Sean Payton for a while family for a while uh under the scenario he's been doing he's been on Fox for a year this is something that the Saints should have already had together already is what I'm saying this should have already been something that they did were decided on what they were going to do and once again the dinosaur uh, people at the top of the Saints are slow to the kill and what's interesting about this whole scenario is that we we want a first round draft pick and I'm like is that all you want yeah well we'll we'll see what the and pretty much what it is is the Saints are going to see what the market give them from Sean Payton so you don't go into the market with a demand you got a low garbage time asking price for Sean Payton a garbage asking price for Sean Payton. And you're going to, and basically with Mickey, with the dinosaur Mickey Loomis and the rest of these slow ass people with this on top of the Saints organization is going to do is they're going to let the market demand dictate what they get for Sean Payton as opposed to them saying, we want this, we want that, we want this. Don't call me if you don't have it. Now we know that if the Saints had a demand, they could be able to get, they could be able to get whatever they want for Sean Payton and keep it moving. There are going to be teams. There are teams now that's lined up to interview him. They know what they got. And the Saints could be able to get some good uh, compensation for trading Sean Payton, who quit on the Saints. So at the end of the day, I was, we was going hashing this thing out on the previous stream. And I'm saying to myself, you know what's going to happen, family? The Saints are going to allow the market to dictate the value of what they get to Sean, for Sean Payton. Watch and see. Because they don't, when Mickey Loomis came out, they want a first round draft pick for Sean Payton. And they, and that was like, is that it? What are you talking about? Just the first, because that's what they're going to do. They're going to allow the market to dictate what they get for Sean Payton. So once again, no visionaries, no vision, no gumption, no strength, no energy, no decisiveness, just old slow ass plotting movements by these old people at the top of the New Orleans Saints organization, which I've been advocating for Mickey Loomis to be removed. He's done 20 odd years. Thank you for your service. But we need somebody young with, with you know, that's, that's here that's going to push forward with some passion, some determination. We need some we need some force. We don't need somebody who don't have an offseason plan. And we almost two weeks into the offseason. We don't need somebody who had who didn't do any evaluations on players or coaches. But yet their adversaries, our adversaries are calling us about interviewing our people that Mickey Loomis didn't even do evaluations on. You see how ridiculous this is? And it just carries on and on. It just carries on from the season. The crap that happened with Dennis Allen, it just carries on into the offseason. That's what I was saying about having a plan. How, how is Loomis hadn't done any evaluations on these coaches or these players? And you got other people, namely the Panthers and everybody else, Atlanta and all these other people who are calling you about interviewing you for your coordinators. But you still haven't done an evaluation on 
it's just insane because they don't have any sense of urgency because they fat and complacent. That's the bottom line. But anyway, I'm going to play audio from this Sean Payton interview. He talked about it on Kyle and Kyle Patty. Kyle heard these they two birds of a feather, to be honest with you. That's why he's always on there. And then we're going to go over the Coach Rashad thing. So y'all y'all hear, hear, put one in the chat if you can hear this audio on Sean Payton. Here we go. You, um, I've heard Texans. Uh, I've heard uh, uh, Carolinas out there. Uh, there's Denver discussions. Can you can you verify this week? This is the week now, starting tomorrow or tomorrow. Tomorrow you can interview. Are you interviewing? Yeah. So um, the way the league rules are set up uh, for coaches that are under contract with teams, and, and that would be me. Um, they can begin the interview process tomorrow. Um, I'll have a chance to visit prior to then. Like I've talked with a few teams. Mm-hmm. That's that's just done through permission with the Saints. Um, but I think this week would be yeah it would be Houston, um, Denver, uh, later in the week Carolina. Do you go there? Um, in, in in some cases, depending on schedules, they'll come here. Or in other cases, Zoom. I might go there. End of the week, I'll go out to New York. I'll have a chance to visit with uh, Mr. Tepper in Carolina. If I may, what's the compensation look like? Can I ask that? Um, we we haven't even met yet, so that's probably something. Well, no, that's that's something that comes up later in the process. Um, I mean, that matters. Yeah, but 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 being that I haven't interviewed with any of these people yet, it's it would just be, you know, speculating relative to... Can I ask this question? Um, compensation for the trade or compensation for me? Well... Come on, Peyton. You know what he means, man. See, this is the policy. See how he gets to stuttering and bumbling and stumbling? He knew what he was talking about. Come on, bro. Keep it real, man. He did, we need to run this guy for governor or something, the way he just run around uh, questions, man. Let's start with a trade. Okay, so the Saints, some, for instance, Denver uh, doesn't have a first because they gave it up for Russell. So I'm not sure even how – would that make that problematic? No, I, look, I think, I think each team um, would be a little different. Mickey Loomis and I have talked already about it. I, I think ultimately the compensation f- for the Saints would be – uh, a mid, a mid or later first round pick. Okay. Uh, a mid or late first round pick. A mid or late. Are you guys cool with that for Sean Payton? A mid first round pick for Sean Payton, and or a late first round pick for Sean Payton. Now you know. Before I continue on, let me just pause it right there and just ask the Who That Nation and the Great Saint Think Tank. What do you guys think about that compensation package? You know, a, li- a mid or a li- or a late first round draft pick for Sean Payton. That's pretty precise. That means you don't get a top ten pick for Sean Payton. Let's say uh, you need a, a deal with a team and they got a top ten pick. Yeah, I'm not giving you that pick. I'm sure I'm gonna use that pick for my team. I'm here now. I'm this guy now. I'm the head coach of this football team now. I keep this pick. We'll give you this type of pick. And what's interesting is about the situation is that. The Saints can't, and they're not going to, and listen, family, they're not going to be too stern on Sean Payton. They're going to work hand in hand because Mick, Mickey Lomas is not aggressive. He's not a alpha guy. He's not Sean Payton and him. He'll work to the benefit of, of Sean Payton. That's what it is. Because if Sean Payton don't like where they're trying to trade him at, like some of the family members are saying, I agree a thousand percent on that, by the way, that he's just going to pull up stakes and stay on Fox until the contract run out in 2024. Then you get nothing for him. And do I think Sean Payton is disgusting enough to do that? Hell yeah, I think he's disgusting enough to do that because he pulled up stakes and went away from the Saints. He was going to quit on you in 2019. He still quit with multiple years left on his contract. So he's proven to be a quitter, uh, you know, already. So, yeah, I think that's not beyond him to pull up stakes with that. So that might indeed affect whatever trade value you get for Sean Payton. This is something else. So what do you guys think about that? Brother Greg says we getting a se- <laughs> we getting a second round pick in the pack of Newports for Sean Payton. All right, Brother Greg, shout out to you, man. What do you guys think, man? Thank you for that, bro. What do the rest of the family members think? So what do y'all think about that, man? Hell no, says Young City. Preston says Texans offer would be the best, but Tex- but the Texans, Preston, has a top, a top 10 pick, right? A top five pick, right? Payton saying mid to late mid to late pick that's really interesting that he would say that because he i know what peyton's thinking if he goes there he wants to keep the highest picks as he possibly can 
so that he can use them to t retool the team or add whatever needs that he feel like he that he wants to have. So this is going to be very interesting, man. Unlike some of the prior trades of yesteryear, like when they put out the demand, we want two first and a third or whatever. We kind of going at a different. We want at least the first round pick or more is what the word was originally that Loomis put out. We want at least a first round draft pick and more. What is more? Nobody knows what more is until the time comes because the market, how they moving, they are going to allow the market to dictate what the value is for Sean Payton. Watch and see. Watch and see. Preston said they have a second and a 12 for the Texans. Okay. So you would probably, so if Peyton goes to the Texans, he would say, we ain't giving you the two, we'll give you the 12. You know, once it all said and done, because he won't try to keep some of those picks so he can use them for his advantage when he becomes head coach of whatever team he decides to go to. So I can see that. All right. So, all right. Yeah, this is going to be real interesting, family. I can tell y'all. Let's finish up. Um, now, we can arrive at that in a lot of different ways. Uh, I think Denver has a pick. They acquired back when they traded. Uh, it's the 49ers uh, pick. Yeah, so they have okay, that. Okay, you're right. So it's the end Chubb of the first round. You're right. Yeah, but but each team's got different ammo yeah. or different pick selections. And, you know, it, it could be a future one maybe where you have to throw in something. Um, I I say this because I know Mickey well, and I heard him talk the other day, and, and he was right on, and I think I am too. Um, he, he's got a job to do as a general manager with the Saints, uh, and, and he'll, he'll get the right compensation, and, and I'm sure the team, if it gets that far, uh, will arrive at it. And it's probably this year, it would probably be, you know, a mid to late first round pick, I, I would say. Mm -hmm. All right, very interesting. James, uh, 1984 JB says, telling your who that nation is going to be time to boycott. They don't care about us fans too much bull, us family members too much bull. Thank you, James. Appreciate the super chat, man. Uh, yeah, um, I think it's it's interesting, uh, the whole play. You know, we knew Sean Payton, eventually the trade was going to come. I don't, I just feel like we, we, we're unprepared here. We're moving a little, we're moving a lot slower than what we're supposed to. We kind of, we kind of trailing behind purposefully. I ain't saying purposefully like they're doing. I'm thinking that we just dragging ass. We're moving with a, a no sense of urgency is what I mean. Like, like what I talked about on the previous shows. The Saints have an opportunity to line up, right, uh, to be kind of in a situation where they're ahead of the pack. Instead of having a plan coming into the going directly into the offseason because you're a nine playoff team, we're going into the second week of nine playoff. I mean, we hitting Monday. We're about to start. We're starting a whole nother week since the Saints were ousted in the uh, – well, they, they were ousted – out of the regular season, they just they failed to 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 meet the demand to get into the to the playoffs. This is going into the second week of nine, uh, you know, since the regular season has ended, and the Saints have not have they don't have a game plan. Uh, Loomis said it out of his mouth that they have to do still do evaluations on players and coaches, which I don't understand why those wasn't done before the season ended. He did he got up there didn't answer any questions of any relevance. You know, that, you know, people asking them what's going on with this, going on with that. I have to do my evaluations. Didn't do anything. Didn't give us much information at all. We do know that he, he don't have a plan going into the offseason. And everything just seems to be on the same line, the same timeline or the same realm of actions. You know, even though we know and the Who That Nation, the great same thing tank, know that we can get a lot more for Sean Payton than a late first round pick or a mid first round pick, depending on what team we go to. And, and really, truthfully and honestly, if we had more of a stern, more decisive uh, demand for Sean Payton services, the teams with the, the picks that we don't want should not need to apply. Or if they do apply, they're going to have to give up to get, to get to that point. It's just really strange, man. Jamal, shout out to you, bro, for being pro megastar. Says Q, Mickey will let Payton dictate his value. Of course he will, bro. We know that we know how this go. These people absolutely worship Sean Payton, Mickey Loomis, all of them in there. They absolutely think this man is God in the flesh. They worship this guy. They pick the coach that we currently have based on his recommendation. And they think that Sean Payton is made of gold and need to be carried on your head, uh, <laughs> carried on your shoulders, uh, like what happened in the three, the Ten Commandments story. So, I mean, it's really, really peculiar how all of this is, 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 is moving forward. But you're absolutely right. The value, you know, Sean is going to decide where, he, where he's going to go. And the Saints are going to oblige him. 
Mickey Loomis is not going to buck Sean Payton because that's not Mickey Loomis's. That's not even his character type. He's not an alpha. You know, the only alpha that they had on top of the team was Sean Payton. And he ran them all. Pete, Car Pete Carmichael's damn sure not an alpha. He's as beta as it get. Uh, Mickey Loomis is damaged, not an alpha. Dennis Allen's not an alpha. So you got a, a bunch of B's running around there. And he's an A, and he was commanding and running everything. And Sean Payton was running that whole thing, man. Because you could see how the team reacted once Sean Payton was removed from there. They did. They just, it, it, there was no leadership whatsoever there. And he was the guy. And is that a credit to Payton? No, Payton knew what he was doing. He put a bunch of B's around him so nobody challenges him. And for people that did challenge Sean Payton, uh, you know, like when Adrian Peterson challenged Sean Payton, he got him out of town lickety split. I can't have this. So Sean Payton, one of his greatest skills as a head coach is to put a bunch of bees around him. And I don't know, you know, I, I mean bees. Y'all y'all need to get y'all minds out the gutter. I'm talking about betas. I'm talking about betas. We ain't talking about, you know what, you know. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying from the, from the perspective of a leadership role, you know, that Sean Payton had a bunch of people around him. That he that would not challenge what he was doing there. He would they wouldn't challenge him. He even had that going on in the media. When he had the media scared to challenge him for years, I was sitting up here saying these people are placating for Sean Payton. A handful of people would challenge him. That lady who moved out of here was a report. I forgot her name, but she would challenge him. She got on her, and I was like, "How is Sean Payton talking to that lady right there? What you doing? You can't talk to that lady. You know all that kind of stuff. You know people uh, when he got uh, did all those foolish calls and." And people was asking him in the meat shops where he was going. Why you did that, coach? Why such and such? Well, you don't need to ask me about that. You cut this meat better. He already had a guy complex walking around here. And the people that was placating for him didn't make it no better. You know, so at the end of the day, what I see here is that, yeah, this is going to be a move. This is going to be a move where it benefits Sean Payton. That was the question I had before this even started. I was like, if, is the Saints going to be a team that command the proper value for Sean Payton? Will they be like, yo, Sean, we want you to go here, there, in the third, da, 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 and you just going to go? No. He, and, you know, he going to say no, and then Sean Payton is going to pull up and states and go sit on, and sit on Fox for two years to the contract run out. You get nothing for him. Do I think he's capable of that? You damn right I think he's capable of that. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. He, we, if he don't like where he's going, he don't have to go. He don't have to go. If he don't like where he's going to go, he can just stay on Fox for two years or for this year and next year to his contract run out. Then he'll take whatever job he want without any restriction. So this is once again, Sean Payton's dictating the play family. So don't get, you know, one of those trades that you've seen in the past, the John Gruden trade or, uh, or a couple of the other trades that you've seen happening this trade setting up to be a big disappointment. It really is. We're going to be like, man, come on, man. What's going on? Watch. It's, it's, it's setting up to be a trade that will benefit Peyton more so than it do the saints, because that's what it make. Loomis worships. They worship this guy. They really do. Anyway, let's finish up, man. Um, now it changes. If nothing happens this year and we go next year, then it, that changes considerably. Do you believe, Sean, um, I, for years and years, I've, I've had friends who coach, and I, and I say, why are you rushing back into it? To me, the two things that would matter, and I'm a novice, is ownership stability and quarterback. I could deal with and If I don't know a GM, but he has a nice reputation, I'll figure that out. Sure. You know, it doesn't matter who it is. I, I, I can get, you can get along with people. It probably won't be Mickey Loomis perfect, but you can get a good guy. Uh, ownership quarterback. Is that how you view it? Yeah. Oh, okay, those are the two biggies. Yeah, I would start with ownership and, and just the – because, look, you know, finding, finding both, you know, generally speaking, if the quarterback is there, they're probably a team that's playing well, generally speaking. And so the, the teams that have openings, I'm not going to say are broken, but they've had problems. That's why right. there's an opening. Right. Okay. Now let's take let's take a, a step back and listen to what Coach Payton is saying here. Coach Payton, Kyle, Kyle and Kyle Patty, Kyle heard that's a good question. What he asked, he asked about the importance of what he's looking at. Ownership quarterback. Right? It's if you say, well, why did why did you leave the Saints? You had the ultimate ownership group. Way but the best ownership group in the NFL. Why would you leave that to go somewhere else? Well, look at the second thing, quarterback, right? 
Drew Brees left. It was only a matter of time before, before Coach Payton left. Why? Because he could. He struck lightning with Drew Brees. Let's just keep it a buck fifteen. He struck lightning with Drew Brees. You know, he flipped a coin, won a lottery with Drew. Could not mimic that. Could not recapture that energy again. Because if he had landed a quarterback, let's say the Saints were progressive enough, and this just goes to show you over the past, the Saints have a a horrible back ass mentality of holding on to people beyond where they're supposed to be. We held on to Drew Brees way longer than what we were supposed to be. Now, had the Saints had some vision and allowed Drew Brees to go on that last time before that last that last three-year contract that he signed, they would have got Tom Brady to come here, who's a, you know, a little older than him, but still playing at a better level than what Drew Brees was playing at, and you would have had at least a Super Bowl with Tom Brady. But that takes vision to be able to see that because Brady wanted to come here. So outside of that, you think Sean Payton would have went anywhere if Tom Brady was the quarterback of the Saints with Drew Brees, if they made that move at that point? Let's add another quarterback to it. What if the Saints had got a top 10 quarterback, name him, whoever, trade or or however, and put him here with Sean Payton? Would Sean Payton have left? I'm asking who that nation is question. If there was a top 10 quarterback playing for the Saints right after Drew Brees left, Let's say Drew Brees retires because he couldn't keep it going. Somehow, some way, the Saints acquired a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. Does Sean Payton leave to go talk on talk about sports on Fox? Yeah or nay? Let me hear what you got to say about it. Put yeah or nay in the comment section. Does Sean Payton leave Is he, if he has a top 10 quarterback right after Drew Brees is le- after Drew leaves and couldn't play anymore, they acquire a top 10 quarterback, does he leave? Does he leave? That's the interesting question that a lot of people don't get is that Sean Payton sit up and he's telling people that it's ownership and quarterback. Well, it's not ownership. The Saints have the best ownership group in the world for Sean Payton. They let him do whatever he want. And look what the family members say. It's a resounding no nade, so on and so forth. He doesn't go anywhere. So, Sean Payton left because he the quarterback situation in New Orleans. It wasn't an ownership group. They gave him whatever he want. Mickey Loomis gave him whatever he want. As you can see, Mickey Loomis just goes in his office, closes the door, and lets you run everything. And if you run it into the ground, then he'll make an excuse for you. But at the end of the day, no. And like the family says, nope, 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 nope. Kelvin says, yes, he does leave with a top 10 quarterback. Pelicans Nola says he, he leaves. I would say no. I say no. Uh, he doesn't go anywhere if he has a top 10 quarterback. He don't go nowhere. And what I'm saying that for is because this guy was the guy that was responsible for bringing quarterbacks here. So you didn't leave for the ownership group because they didn't run you out of there. They were going to give you whatever money you wanted. But he couldn't fix the QB situation. That was the issue with, with him. Because the first thing he does when he, he looks to go find another job is he looking for a quarterback position that's already settled with a veteran quarterback that because that's what he can't do. He can't take young quarterbacks and turn them into anything. He can't. He never had the history of doing that. All the positive stuff he did as a as a as a head coach in New Orleans, that's one of the things that Sean Payton could not do. He could not take a young quarterback, say if you draft them, and turn them into something. He couldn't do that. Couldn't do that for whatever reason. I don't know if he had he didn't have the patience or whatever the case may, might have been. He just could not do that. So at the end of the day, he's looking for positions or opportunities where the quarterback situation is settled. The quarterback situation is settled. So it's just mighty strange, man. Mighty funny and ironic is the term for Sean Payton to be talking about leaving the Saints to go to a steady QB position. And when he was the one that destroyed the Saints QB position here in New Orleans. It's just, un- it's just, it's just a big, big old laugh, man. It really is. Um, and so I, I think that element's critical. The ownership element and, um, and philosophically, you know, cause there, and I've said this and I hope it's, it's, it's not looked at as an indictment on certain teams, but there are a number of teams. It's hard to win in this league. And, and it's certainly harder to win in this league if there's internal uh, problems oh, before you, before you even play an opponent, right? Um, let's say let's say it's a bad. You didn't let, have none of that in Texans, it's a team that's got they got to find a quarterback probably. Um, are you willing to consider that? If, if absolutely you, okay, you here's would. why. Um, and look, 
I think I know the ownership group, not re- very well, but we practiced against the Texans okay. in New Orleans four or five different times. So um, Cal McNair, his his late father, um, we we'd see them, and so I don't I don't know them well, but I but I know them. We we you know when you when you practice for three days with an opponent, you, you get a chance to meet a lot of the different personalities and people involved in the building. Um, they've got really good draft capital, really good draft couple capital. A couple good young players. They're in a division that you can at least look at and say, all right, Indy, Tennessee, Jacksonville is nothing. But you, you can at least, all right, how do we? So I, I think there's growth potential immediately there from their two or three wins that they had this year. Um, I know Nick a little bit, Casario, mm-hmm. um, because, again, when he was in New England, we had a lot of practices with with their team. So each each team would be just like we're having that discussion. There'd be pros and that that's the significance though of the upcoming week or two of meeting Mm -hmm. some of these individuals, asking some questions, maybe some difficult questions and, and, and trying to get answers so that we're not having difficult questions when you've already taken the job. All right, so let's look at what the the draft capital. You're talking about the Texans, and a lot of people say Peyton's not go not going to go to the Texans because they don't have the they have the ownership group that's willing to give them the money and to run the team, but they don't have the quarterback that he's asking. But he he shoots that down. But if you he said draft capital, the draft capital, not for for the Saints, but for him to build or to use to his liking to get whatever players that he feel like he needs. So if he was if the if the conversation that we he just had with Colin Cowherd early on when he talking about mid to late draft pick, it does fit the scenario that if he was going to the Houston Texans, you see what I'm saying? Because if you look at what the Texans draft selection, we got it on screen right here. You got a first that's the, the first pick, second overall. Currently, they got the 12th overall pick they got from Cleveland in the second round. They got a, the 33rd pick there. They got two thirds. Uh, with the 65th overall and the 73rd overall, they got a fourth, fifth, and f- what four, six round picks. So, but if you're looking at the capital early on in the first four rounds, they have a, a lot of they got two first round picks and two third round picks. They're going there, so you know. And I know this is not what he's looking at. And there's probably going to be some other teams that throw some stuff at him. I, I'm Denver's a team that I'm hearing real serious about them. Uh, you know, they are you know pretty much they're going to try to make a strong push to land his services, but it does look like when he speak about late and uh, late mid and late first round pick, you know, look at that. So if it was the Texans, could you see a trade where he gets a first round, a second round and two thirds? Is that what it takes to land the Saints? Would y'all be happy with that? Let me pose that to the family members. Let me ask that to the family members. Would you guys be cool if let's just say this hyperbole, if the Texans was the team that Peyton decided he wanted to go to, they didn't want to surrender the second overall pick. Would you be cool with taking the twelfth overall pick, the third, the second round pick, and two thirds? Would that be good enough for you? Would that be good enough for you? They ain't gonna give you two thirds. They're gonna give you one, one of the thirds. They can give you a one, a two, a one of the threes, and a two from next year. Let's just say that a second round pick from. Would that be good enough for you guys? Okay, JT says no. Shout out JT. Good to see you, brother. Shout out to you. Would that be good? Who says yes? That'd be good. Okay. Lionel says yeah. Okay. All right. 504 to 704 says no. Brother John says, uh, John Butler says yes. Jay Survivor, yes. Not Young City says no. Okay. My dog says no, but both the first. They're not going to surrender both first. I can tell you that. Dana says no. So this is going to be interesting, man. Very interesting. Uh, how this 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 play it happens. This is gonna be interesting, man. This is gonna be a fun situation. Josh says, Big Q, you you can't say he destroyed the QB room. We had a top pick, they went after Mahomes, but most of the time the Saints were in behind the first round. But yes, he did pass on Lamar. He didn't pass on Lamar either, bro. He pa- he he passed on Mahomes. There were other quarterbacks that are available that the Saints could have been aggressive and went and gotten. They they had some people that they went. He talks about it a lot. He became quite the chatty caddy. And talked about some of these these quarterbacks that he missed on. We know Lamar could have been a guy he looked at. He talked about Lamar all the time. He talked about Deshaun Watson. There have been a couple of guys that he could have really got more aggressive and went after. But he simply didn't go after. 
And I think the the, the thing about it is, Sean, this is not a coincidence that he misses on Mahomes. Talks about the Mahomes thing, passes on other young quarterbacks, and then proceeds to just not go anybody, just go get vet, keep getting veterans because he knows he's he he knows his his follies. He well not flaw, he knows his flaws, he knows his limitations, he knows what he could do, and he knows that he can't take a young quarterback and groom him into a starting quarterback. Sean Payton knows he can't do that. He knows that. And for the longest time, we thought that he would get a young quarterback. We thought that when you have Drew Brees here for all those years, we should have had like toward the back end of his career. We know he was winding down. We should have had a draft pick in place behind him to carry it on. The Saints failed and flubbed that up mightily. And then it got to the back end when he was talking about Taysom is Steve Young, not like Steve Young. He said is, which was crazy. I knew he was losing and cracking it up then when he was saying that Taysom is not no Steve Young, not even close. You know, Taysom has opportunity to just throw the ball, don't even go through his progressions, pull the ball on and just start running. He's not Steve Young. You know, so I mean, and then the Jameis Winston thing went south. I mean, it was a lot of the Teddy Bridgewater thing was a positive until he backstabbed him. So, I mean, it's just ridiculous. All right, Hoodie, shout out to what's up, Hoodie? He says, give me tw- a 12th pick for this year and that first for next year and a third rounder from next year, then trade that 12th and that. <laughs> Hoodie, what are you doing, man? What, what's all this stuff? Hoodie says, give me the 12th from this year and their first the, and the first next year and the third from next year, then trade that 12th and, and next year's first round pick for a top five pick and draft CJ Stroud. <laughs> Oh, hit it with the long way to get there, man. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's finish up, fam. You're a year away from football. Um, one of the things I've noticed, and I've, I've noticed this over the last six or seven years, fewer huddles, worse clock management. That jumps at this weekend about Oof. seven. Not this good. Your boy, Dennis um, Allen and, is there and anything um, that – you've viewed from Fox, you're perched down and said, you know, this is one thing I'm going to take with me that, you know, you're on that treadmill as smart as you are. Sometimes when you're on the treadmill, stuff flies by and you don't see it. What has been your big takeaway watching the sport and not coaching it? Yeah, I, I think the value on field position and understanding field position relative to points, um, Parcells taught us that all of us, you know, when we were young coaches, you know, if if you really did a study, 100 yards equals seven points. And so the hidden yardage in games, uh, you see from afar how valuable that is and sometimes how um, uh, it's it's in a lot of cases not given its appropriate value on game day. In other words, coaches, uh, we spend a lot of time talking about analytics and, and what are the two things when we bring up analytics, we talk about two point plays and fourth downs. And there, there's so much more to analytics. You and I were just talking about play sequencing. You know, a good offense oftentimes is making a first down before they ever get to third down. So in the CFL, you have three downs. Yeah. Right. So, you know, that CFL stats important. I want to know how we're doing on first and second down. How many times are we? Gaining a first down on first or second down. It's CFL numbers. I saw a third and 15 Kendall, 20 Cinemore, times man. this weekend. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, shout out to Kendall Cinema for hitting that subscribe button. Shout out to your fam. Uh, KT, shout out to you, man. Brother Pat Rich, shout out to you. He says, I'll take that 12th trade back and get that, get that, give that third. Okay, thank you, bro. KT, shout out to you. My brother says, I want CJ Stroud, Jaron Hall, Cam Ward, Anthony Rich- Richards, Richardson, yeah, from Auburn or Max Dugan from TCU. Uh, Mickey better not screw up the trade package. There you go, bro. All right. And then once again, fam, we kind of recap in the interview that Coach Payton had with Kyle and Kyle Patty. Kyle heard about the 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 Saints and he talked picks and said this much uh, in terms of uh, once again. Thank you, KT, uh, of what he feels or what he thinks that the compensation for him should be, which he mentioned a late of a mid or a late first round draft selection. That's the sh- to the chagrin or uh, the, the the actually thought process of a lot of the who that nation. A lot of who that nation believe that Coach Payton is worth a lot more than a mid or late first round draft selection. I most certainly think that and I think a lot of the who that nation believe so as well based on the history of coaches who were traded before. 
the Raiders were very stern in their requests of what they wanted the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to give them so they can get John Gruden. They wanted two firsts, two seconds, and they even gave him $8 million in cash to go along with that. At the end of the day, it could very well be that we get less. We get less now than what the Buccaneers gave up to acquire a Super Bowl-less John Gruden so many years ago. And remember, Gruden hadn't won that Super Bowl yet when they gave up two first rounders, two second rounders, and $8 million in cash. He didn't get that Super Bowl until that next year, that next regular season, when he took Tony Dungy's team to the Super Bowl against his former Raider team, which they had some shenanigans. That's probably one of the most fixed Super Bowls in the history. I did videos on that, played interviews from the players, Jerry Rice, Tim Brown, guys like that, uh, who was on there just dropping it. You know, Lincoln Kennedy, guys like that, they was just dropping the facts about it, of how all that played out. But anyway, it could very well be when this is all over with that we might get less compensation for a Super bowl John Gruden. And if that's the case, that's on the Saints, man. That's most certainly on the Saints because they're not, it don't seem like they just, they, they're on top of it right now. I just really don't. But anyway, five NFL teams, we know currently that are looking at Coach Payton who received permission to talk to Payton. And of course, remember tomorrow, the interview started with him saying he was going to uh, talk to the Broncos up first. And then you got Arizona, you got Houston, you got Carolina now into the fray. We gave permission for them to do that. So we just going to wait and see how all this play up. I have absolutely no idea how fast this process is going to be. Hopefully this don't take a lot of time. Hopefully it's over with and within the next 10 days so we can move on and figure out what we have so we can make things happen right now. Remember, Mickey Luma still ain't doing any uh, draft evaluations. I mean, any player evaluations or coaches evaluations. And they have two teams that are currently trying to interview coordinators uh, from the Saints. Now, of course, the latest one that is happening now is the Panthers. The Panthers are now currently interacting permission from the Saints to interview coach a uh, co-coordinator coach Chris Richard which is going to be interesting hoodie says uh, thank you for the super chat bro he says Q how you feel about this trade package Texans get Sean and our 2024 first round pick but we get their 2023 first round pick too and the second round uh he said and the second and the third 2023 I don't know, bro. I don't want to surrender our 2024 pick, bro. I don't want to give up our 2024 pick. If we give him Sean, I just want to just keep it where we just give him Sean. I don't want to give out no more capital or no, no, you know, none of that. Now, it could be a play. What if there is a player or a starter at play where you send Peyton and he sends some picks, say, we ain't going to give you this pick, but we'll give you a starter. How do you feel about that? That could be something as well that could be thrown in there. We'll see how it all works in the end. But, you know, when it's all said and done, uh, I, I, I would try to refrain from giving any of our draft capital hoodie to these people. I, we need to retain whatever we have and get whatever they got. I think we got Sean Payton. That's a big piece. And we should be able to get whatever we want from these teams that don't have a coach. They're going to that's that'll be compre- in a compressed timeline for his services. So it'd be between and remember the Saints got to say this guy, that guy, that guy along with Payton. So we, we're going to see how it all works, man. But. I, w- I don't want to give up any more of our capital to get out. I just want to try to retain as much capital as we can with all the, you know, they got to work that money out. And these picks are going to be very valuable for uh, us going forward, depending on how we use them, of course. So anyway, the Panthers request permission to interview Coach Richard. Remember uh, the other day, the Atlanta Falcons are requesting permission to talk to to talk to uh, Coach Ryan Nilsom, who's the co-coordinator, defensive coordinator of the Saints. So within a matter of days, you have two rivals, two NFC South competitors that are equally looking to go after your coordinators. <laughs> it's, just, it's amazing. So, of course, the Saints have to give permission to the Panthers and the Falcons. And according to, you know, the information is out there, they've yet to give permission to any team outside of giving Sean Payton, you know, team's permission to talk to Payton. So, I mean, right now, we don't know. And, and who knows if uh, that'll be the case. Now, I remember Mickey Loomis did say he was supposed to do these evaluations of coaches and players that if he had done this already, we could be ahead of the game and what we need to do. So, people mentioned, said, Q to me, uh, Coach Rashard, somebody, he was asleep and nobody was looking at him. I told you that's not, that's, that's going to change. 
what he did with the Saints secondary and the defense is people are on notice about that. They know who Coach Richard is. You know, he's had success no matter where he went to. And now he's looking to be a defensive coordinator, not nobody's co-coordinator. The same with Ryan Nelson. These guys want to be coordinators. They want to keep climbing. So in the end, we'll see what the Saints do. So it's all up to Mickey Loomis, who has yet to do any evaluations on these coaches yet. So, you know, is, we'll find out in a matter of days whether or not that'll be something that they grant permission to. And, of course, this was kicked out there by Ian Rappaport, as you can see. He the one that dropped the scoop on there that they requested permission to speak with defensive backs coach Chris Richard for a possible defensive coordinator job, sources say. So they're looking at him for the possible coordinator job. They're conducting head coach interviews and defensive coordinator interviews concurrently. Richard likely will get others, which means he's saying, Ian Rappaport is telling you that the, the Panthers won't be the only team that will come asking to interview for coach Richard, for the family members that are saying, oh, Richard's ain't nothing, there you go. We This was just yesterday. You see how fast things change, I'm telling you. When people know you can do the job, they're going to come a call in. So he says Richard likely will get others, other offers. So the only way to kind of stop this is if you say, no, nah, we're going to elevate you to the defensive coordinator. And then that way, you know, whatever. But that also then kicks out one of the other. So which one do you go with if you're the New Orleans Saints? Do you then say, because I'm, I'm pretty sure the Saints don't want to lose both of those guys. They got to pick one of them to be a coordinator. And then, you know, and, and, and you know, go from there. So I, I pose this to the Who That Nation. Which one would you take? You know, let me throw that out there to the family members. Which one of these guys would you take? Would you take Richard or would you take Ryan Nielsen to be the coordinator, the coordinator, who, if you had a choice, if you if they came for one or the other, and you can only pick one to be the coordinator, the other one going to get plucked, which one would you take? You know, me personally, I like Ryan Nielsen, but I got to go with Chris, uh, with Chris Richard because he's had the defensive coordinator position before. He's an excellent motivator. He's a good communicator. He's a really intelligent guy. He's, he's a thorough brother. I, I would like to keep Coach Richard because I think he has more experience than Ryan Nielsen. But what you guys think? Y'all put put it in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about that. Let me know how you feel about that. Okay, Wazan Mo says uh, he he wants Richard. All right, Brother Scott says Nielsen got to stay. Okay. All right, Black Ball and Enterprises. Thank you, bro, for smashing that subscribe button. Appreciate you, family. Much love to you. Appreciate you. All right. Yeah, my dog says Sean blocked Rashard from leaving before. I don't remember him blocking Rashard. I remember him blocking Ryan Nielsen. He blocked him from going to the uh, the, the LSU Tigers when Coach Ogeron was up there, you know. But he was trying to get out. Okay, L-Dub says Coach Rashard. Willie Cameron says keep Rashard. My dog says Rashard. Preston says Rashard. <laughs> Larry says the ship is sinking. Please jump. <laughs> Tragic says, I'll take Richard. Eric says, Richard. 504 says, Richard. All right. Josh says, I've been saying this for years. Loomis has lost his edge. He needs to go. We need a young, hungry GM that wants to say, F everyone else, let's build this team. Bro, listen, we talked about it, bro. I've been advocating for, for Kai to step in that position. And if he keep playing and won't get out the way, Kai, Kai is going to do what Terry Fontenot did, which is go somewhere else. So I, it's, it's, it's not a good thing. All right, Darrell, shout out, says Richard. All right, Jarrell says Chris, uh, Chris Richard. Joshua says Chris. Damn, a lot of people are saying Richard. Okay, Tramal says, go up. What's up, Colinator? Uh Tragic says, Nielsen obviously has some hard in keeping these injured DEs. All right, Tr uh, True Louise Animal says, keep Richard. Okay, I see, I see. All right, JC says, Coach Richard for head coach. <laughs> All right, Josh. What's up, Josh? Says Rashad has helped develop Lattimore, Williams, Gardner. Josh. Yes, indeed. That's a great point there, Josh. Shout out to you. Wu says Chris Rashad position ground was more consistent. Okay, KT said I will keep Nielsen. I like Rashad though. Okay, thank you, KT. All right. All right. He said uh, Dado says we might lose both. Uh, we might lose them both. I don't think we lose both of them, uh, Dadu. I don't think we lose both of them, bro. You know, I think it's either one or the other, in my opinion, bro. I don't think we lose both of them. Um, Ryan says, and Peyton probably going to take Jeff Ireland. Sorry, everybody. You think coaching was bad this year? Jeff Ireland is another dude that is would be, you know, he was a general manager before with the Miami Dolphins. 
He's taken, he's developed Bono's draft picks. He's been phenomenal in picking up the talent, scouting, the undrafted guys, all that's Jeff Ireland and this team. If you lose Jeff Ireland, you know, I don't know who's under Ireland. I know they got some good guys there, but Jeff Ireland's been instrumental in a lot of what's been going on behind the scene with the Saints with all this talent that we've been getting. He finding these guys like Deontay Harris, Harty, he found these guys like Rashid Shaheed and Callaway and all these fantastic young players that we have that are, you know, contributing. He helped find all of those guys. So uh, Jeff Ireland is another guy. And I heard some, you know, some stuff around there, too, that teams could be looking at Jeff Ireland. So, you know, we'll see, man. All right. Young City says Richard. Ava says Richard. Beverly says Richard. What's up, Beverly? Uh, BJ9 says Richard. Ryan says Chris Rashard has the passion. Yeah, I know he he passionate, bro. I, I'm with you on that. Jim says Rashard. Thank you, Jim. Uh, OG says Rashard stays. All right, thank you, OG. Shout out to you. All right, so yeah, it, seeing all of a lot of people says yes, Rashard, 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 Rashard. Uh, and free game said I want Sean McVay. McVay stand with the Rams, bro. He already threw that out there. He ain't going nowhere. Joshua Hoover says Rashard. As head coach Nielsen and DC then pay Bell uh be enemy as OC. O, he don't want an OC position, bro. He wants to be the coach. He ain't jumping from Kansas City to come be the Saints OC. They offered him that position before he turned it down and just paid them what they want. I, I don't think that's gonna work. The Saints are cheap. You know, they ain't gonna pay that kind of money uh to, to put guys together unless their name is Drew Brees or Sean Payton. Eric says, Q, I've been telling Mickey Loomis is a liar. Sean Payton is <laughs> he pimping Luke Mickey. Oh, wait, hold on now, Eric. You done stepped across the line now. You done like, you know, let me tell you something, buddy. I well, you don't you can't have, listen here. That's insulting. You can't do that. You can't say that about me. Yeah, that, 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 that's that, that's awful. You know, pimping. Sean Payton's pimping me. That that's that's that, that that's that's horrible. That's that, that that's, that's that's unfathomable that you would say such a thing like that. Boy, I tell you. Some of these who that nation members, boy, they get downright hardcore. You know, I, 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 I don't know nothing about none of that. You guys talking about Sean Payton's pimping me. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, Eric, that's, I, you know, I, I have to fight. That's, I disrespect that. I have to disrespect you on that, sir. Oh, that's, that's wrong. You know, you don't do that. Y'all don't, don't say that to me. All right, Mickey, calm down, bro. You know, the man can say. <laughs> Oh, I got to go take my, well, listen, I'll flip all my goddamn clam chowder and orange juice over, man. I, I get, <laughs> uh, well, Mickey, calm down, bro. You go eat some clam chowder, drink some orange juice, man. You know, that's, uh, I mean, here. But anyway, yeah, bro, this is just where it is right now, family. So, yeah, that's a few of the things we talked about right here. Just to do a, a brief recap, we talked about the Coach Payton situation. Listen to the interview from the Kyle and Kyle Patty Kyle Hurd show with him on there. Talking about uh, you know his 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 thought process on what team that he wants, uh, he, what do you think the draft compensation would be? He did say uh, mid first round, late first round. It's really interesting that with the different teams that have top ten picks, he didn't say top ten picks, whatever you see, which is very very interesting, man. Because most of the times, if we're gonna give the guy up, we got to make sure we give. Uh, you know, we get the best compensation for him. And this is this shaping up to be something very interesting. Anyway, let's finish up with this article right here, fam. Uh, potential Saints cap cuts for the 2023 season. Let's go over that right quick, uh, quick from the Saints Wire. No team has more work to do in managing the salary cap commitments than the Saints this offseason. Depending on where you source your information, they're in the red by the margins between 53 and 57 million. The Saints, that means some talent is going to be leaving in the spring as the Saints look to cut costs, get younger, and frankly, get more bang for the buck. We've already listed the Saints' big, biggest salary cap hits. Here are five areas where the Saints could free up some resources and look for upgrades. And at the top of the list, of course, is Jameis Winston, right? He says, a real shame that things haven't worked out for the better for Winston in New Orleans. He worked so hard to recover from injuries and assert himself to a new locker room. He's handled things the right way despite being dealt a bad hand. Thank you, KT. He says, would you hire Frank Wright as an offensive coordinator? That wouldn't be a bad call, bro, as OC. But, you know, I, 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 Frank would act as a, he's a guy that's seen a lot. I, I'm not mad at that hire. I'm not mad at that hire. Even though, you know what I would like a younger Offensive coordinator, like they have a couple of these young guys that that are leaving, but most of these young offensive coordinators, they're looking for head coaching positions, and I doubt that they'll move do a lateral move and and move from if they can't get a coaching job 
as a head coach and leave where they go or from wherever they are to go to you to be doing the same thing. They're looking for something else. So, but Frank Wright to me, uh, he's a guy that that would would definitely be a, a interesting choice to go along in, 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 as an offensive coordinator. And the, the the reality is, if the Saints don't want to, you know, fire Pete Carmichael, because I don't think they're gonna fire Pete Carmichael. I think Carmichael would take a demotion because he wanted to be demoted anyway. He wanted to be just an assistant in the offensive room. He didn't want to be the offensive coordinator. So could you see a, a possible scenario where the Saints pick up Frank Wright and then still keep Carmichael, but as his assistant, you know, and could you see a scenario like that? How do you feel about that? A lot of people just want him to be gone. I just don't want him to be in command of the play calling anymore because he don't have the stones to do, do what needs necessarily to be done. All right. So anyway, leaving late, keeping a good attitude, doing everything he can to support his teammates from the sidelines. Dennis Allen's reluctance to put him back into games after he stopped being listed on the injury report suggests a split is coming. What's the cap hit? 2023 cap hit of $15.6 million. Savings if he's released is just about $4.4 mil. Savings if released before June the 1st, 12, almost $13 million. What you think they're going to do? The money talk BS walks, man. The Saints under Dennis Allen Saints do not want Jameis Winston here. And and uh, the writer makes a great point about him not being listed on the injury report anymore, even though he was dressed down in his uniform and the Saints and Dennis Allen refused to play him because he was in Dennis Allen's doghouse because Jameis Winston went to the press and told him that he promised me that once I became healthy enough to play that he would put me in the game. And when he exposed him as a snake and a backstabbing little go- uh, person that he is, he ultimately put Jameis Winston in the doghouse. And I told you that Jameis wouldn't play one game for the rest of the season. Really, this is the fault of making Loomis. Making Loomis should have got involved in this situation because I doubt Jameis Winston would have went directly to the press after having a conversation with Dennis Allen about not playing him. I'm pretty sure Jameis at some point had to have taken the Mickey Loomis and Mickey Loomis should have fixed this situation. He failed. And as a result, it created a fracture in the team. And ultimately, it cost us an opportunity to compete for the playoffs. So Mickey Loomis, if anything, we could blame Dennis Allen all we want. But Mickey Loomis, where was he at in this whole play? Anyway, look at the savings if the Saints designate him as a June 1st cut, right? A, a prior to a po- uh, savings if he's released. After June 1, 12.8, savings before is 4.4. Look at the numbers. $15.6 million cap hit. Remember, it's two years on Jameis' contract at $28 million, and the Saints paid all that money for nothing. They didn't even play him. Didn't make no sense. Tom Benson would have never let that play. Next man up, y'all know who it is, is Andrews Pete. Pete Pete's missed more time with injuries in 2022, being limited to 11 games after playing just six games in 21. He never played a full season before the NFL expanded his regular season to 17 games. And the durability has continued to be a concern for him. The Saints can get younger, healthier, and more affordable at the guard spot. Pete may have some trade value, but the most cost-effective path would be designate him a post-June 1st cut so they can receive a heavy cap credit later this summer. That would also give Pete his pick of landing spots around the league. The the cap hit 18.3 savings before June 1st, 11 point, I mean 1.3 savings after June 1st, 11.8. So that goes to show you if they do that, they release them before it, they get cap hit at 11.8. And for Jameis, it's almost 13 million. So 13 million for Jameis after June 1st and almost 12 million for Andrews Pete. So we can see some of this Coming into fruition, we know Jameis. I don't think Jameis is coming back. I think Andrews Pete, the change is going to come uh, for Andrews Pete, no doubt about it. You can't get past the money and the durability, durability issues. The third person, Will Lutz, returned for a year-long absence due to injury and put up his worst season as a pro, connecting on just 74.2% of the field goals. He missed two field goals in the Atlanta Falcon game. One of them was tipped, but still in all, missing eight kicks for context, Lutz never completed fewer than 82.1% of his field goals in a single season. That is amazing. 74.2% of his field goals this year in his his average at 82.1 in a single season prior to the core muscle injury. He did make all 33 of the extra attempts, but the Saints can't roster him at this salary. He got to perform like a top tier kicker to justify his contract the way it stands so what is it 5.6 million uh on the on the cap hit savings before uh before 3.7 three savings after 3.7 so 
I wouldn't say get rid of Will Lutz right now. You know, I, I even though Will Lutz is not looking like himself, but I still would say, you know, hold on to Will Lutz. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to get really good kickers in the NFL, and I, I wouldn't want to get rid of Will Lutz. It could have just been a bad down year for him. Number four, they got Traquan Smith up here. Smith was an afterthought on offense even after injuries took Thomas and Jarvis Landry out of the season. He ran fewer than five routes in all, but one game – uh, from weeks 10 to 18, the Saints still value Smith for his blocking ability. That go that blocking, but his lack of con- uh, contributions in the passing game have turned his presence into a tale that telegraphs their intentions to defense. He didn't get much attention in free agency last year. If Smith isn't willing to accept a pay cut, the Saints could let him go and get similar production out of someone paying playing at the league minimum. His cap hit 3.4, salary before 1.9. A release 2.9, almost $3 million. Definitely put this man in the street. Please put this man in the street. Traquan Smith had an opportunity. Traquan Smith is not going to be a producer for the Saints. I'm tired of him talking about everybody won't talk about Traquan Smith as an excellent blocker. Like, that's all you got to do to be a a fourth or fifth man on the team. We got young wide receivers with a lot more upside than Traquan Smith. We've given him an opportunity. We've given him free money. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Let him go and go make his own uh, his own way about it. And the fourth, fifth, fifth on the list at this point, it would be a surprise if the Saints don't part ways with Thomas after restructuring his contract to create some flexibility. For the sh- spring, he would cost more than sixty million against the cap in twenty twenty four if he plays in four or more games in twenty twenty three. So their options are to touch his contract again for reaching cap compliance or let him go with a post June first designation. It's disappointing that things have gotten to this stage, but back to back foot injuries have derailed his career, and it may be best for both Thomas and the Saints if their path split soon right now cap hit it of 13.1 savings before it puts you in the minus 13 and of course after just 1.1 mil and that's everything you got me personally before i even talked about getting rid of michael thomas you know i would give it one more again one more again with michael thomas a lot of people say nah q he got to go i would give it one more again with michael thomas the saints dennis allen did something with Michael Thomas, he recommitted to Michael Thomas last year. They still committed to Michael Thomas. They did restructure his contract. Uh, we're going to see which direction they head because they can be quite backstabby and they can go different ways. They'll tell you they love the guy and the next thing they put him in the street. So we'll see how it is. They did take his advice and bring in his, the compliment that he wanted and Chris Olave. And when he was out there against the Atlanta Falcons, boy, did he just, he was just such a world beater. So after all of this is said and done, do the Saints take one more again, one more shot on Michael Thomas? Do they do that? Did the restructuring uh, help him? Me personally, I'm gonna go with this, and I could be wrong on this, on this Michael Thomas thing. I think Mike Th- Michael Thomas stays. I think the Saints do get rid of some other guys in the position we talked about, Andrews, Pete, and Jameis Winston. I think those guys are guys that ultimately probably going to end up moving on, and the other guys like Traquan Smith. These get guys give you uh, what three, almost four million dollars back in cash. Will Lutz is not going anywhere. Andrews Pete most certainly and Jameis Winston are, in my opinion. So these are guys definitely you're looking at. But at the end of the day, a lot of people say, Q, Michael Thomas is going to be gone. We'll see. We'll see, family. We shall see. We shall see indeed. All right. So anyway, let's get ready to close the stream. With that being said, we're going to recap the Sean Payton. If teams hire me, the Saints will ask for a mid to late first round draft pick. That's from the horse's mouth for Sean Payton. Not a top 10 pick. But a mid to late first round pick for Sean Payton. That seems a lot low value to me. A lot of really low value for Sean Payton. That's just me talking here. You probably disagree. You might agree. That's really low for Sean Payton, man. And we'll see what it's going to look like. And also, we talked about the Panthers uh, going after uh, and seeking permission for the Saints to interview Coach Rashard for the for their defensive coordinator position. Not to mention. Uh, Ian Rappaport put in on the back end of his tweet that Rashard is likely to get other offers from other teams for coordinators. So people, different teams are looking at coach Rashard for a defensive coordinator. Atlanta also put in permit, uh, put in a request to interview Ryan Nielsen. So the saints have two requests to interview both their co-coordinators. They haven't yet to grant that info, that request that we know of right now. Uh, when that happens, we'll we'll see how it all goes. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. And also, we talked about the cap situation. What players could be cap casualties in the upcoming year, in the in going into this offseason? So, with that being said, fam, we're gonna get ready 
to get on on get out on that. Listen, I appreciate the family members for chiming in on this episode of the show. Please feel free to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Shout out to Black Ball and Enterprise for hitting that subscribe button and the rest of the family members chiming in from other mediums. Shout out to Kendall Centimore. Much love to you and the rest of the family members. Uh, please feel free to hit the like button, hit the share button, share the show on your social media feed. Have you, if you haven't already done so, hit the notification bell. And by all means, feel free to check out the Pro Shop. Links is in the description section below. Below, hundreds of products available at the Pro Shop. Uh, the Fire Dennis Allen gear is available for for the women, for the men, and coffee mugs, merch, all kind of stuff. It's not just uh, uh, you know t-shirts or whatnot. There's a whole merch collection dedicated to Fire Dennis Allen. Sorry, tale. So with that being said, I'm going to get out on that. Listen, for my Pelican uh, family members, Pelicans lost today. They'll be coming home. I think it's Wednesday they play the Miami Heat before they go back on the road uh, two more times against the Orlando Magic and the same the Miami Heat team. Crazy schedule uh, for January. But we'll be doing the Pelican Post Game Report later on tonight. If you're interested in jumping in there, uh, feel free to hit the Pelican Post Game Report channel on YouTube. We'll be in full effect. With that being said, I'm going to get out on that. Appreciate you guys. And I'm going to holler at our family members tomorrow on our Tuesday, our Patreon Tuesday special. We'll be back to talk about more same content. With that being said, I'm out. And who that tell you? Like Benson, I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Long as I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose all winning, I'm a who that. Sports coma, yeah, this is where we do that. 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 Huh? Boogie like Benson, I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Somebody please better help. Running this thing like Elf. Thank God every day I'm not a fel. Go to YouTube live with Big Q and the guys. If you ain't ride or die, the bandwagon get flipped. Been marching in, that was way for the ring. I was yelling out your shame for the championship. Fucking on town, duck down. Falcons pluck, get shut down. Panthers ain't much to touchdown. The vision really blown to us now. So much hate on the Saints, you could probably tell. Ever since Bounty Gate hit the NFL, when things seem fishy, then you probably smell. The crooked referees are Roger Goodell. Yeah. like this, and I'm a who that. Every day I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose all winning, I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that, eh. Where we do that, eh. Where we do that, where we do that, where we do that, eh. Boogie like this, and I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. You're listening to the sports coma. It's Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. You can go and buy all the latest merch to support the platform. Available at the Pro Shops, we have dozens of hundreds of products available for you and your family. Unisex tees for men and women, hoodies and sweatshirts, tank tops, kids and baby items, long sleeve tees, mugs, pillows, wall art, bath bedding, face masks, phone cases, stickers, bags, fanny packs, socks, hats, and many other items. Please feel free to check out the Pro Shops. The link is in the description section.
below. And remember, it helps the platform continue to grow. Check out the Pro Shop and who that to. Daily.com. That's right, the Who That Daily.com. Your one stop mm. shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelican, LSU Tigers, mm. even the top flight boxing. So if you're a Who That and you're looking for a place to stay mm. up on your team, the Who That Daily.com is your site. The Who That Daily.com for the sport Who That in all of us. <laughs>